Now, I did, I did promise not to swear on this interview, didn't I? But I'm getting very close to it now. I hate it. I hate being old. It's when I need a stick to get myself out of the car now and things like that. Sad, isn't it? Um, I hate getting old. I loathe it. I mean, I do rescues now that, you know, I go out on a rescue. Luckily, I've got Laurie, who's not only the part of our media department, but, you know, I can't go 70 foot up a tree anymore. My body just won't do it. Or I can't jump a fence that I could have jumped 10 years ago. I have to adjust. Instead of sort of jumping up, or jumping over a fence or doing something, I have to take a ladder with me. But it frustrates me hugely because, you know, my mind's there. It's done it a million times. Um, but the body just goes, off, Simon. We're not doing that today. What I found was when it was set up, just a tiny little organisation to take in the odd injured wild animal when it came into the centre. It grew so quickly it was absurd. I mean, from one animal in one day, we went to sort of two animals a week, and before very long, we were on sort of 10, 20 animals a day. And at the moment, in this time of year over in the UK, we're taking up to about 80 patients a day, so absolutely manic, very full on, and it's just word of mouth. We never tried to grow it, it grew by itself, and now we're one of the biggest wildlife hospitals in Europe, I think. When I'm on a rescue, the adrenaline's flowing, um, and that's what really gets me, you know, that's what I love about wildlife aid, the risk of going out to an animal, that if you don't go out, it's probably gonna die. You know, and no rescue has ever been the same. In 40 years, we've never had an identical rescue. So you have to get out there, work out what you're going to do, you think on your feet, and I love what I do. I mean, I will whinge about it every day to everybody. And if somebody says you can't do it tomorrow, I'd crucify them, because this is what I do, nothing will stop that. I will do it, even if my crew have to carry me out to rescues when I get to 110, I will be there. They'll hate me, because they'll be changing my nappies, they'll be stopping me dribbling, but I will still be there until the very, very end, I can assure you. The range of emotions is huge because if you can't always save something, if it's kinder to put it to sleep, that's always gut-wrenching. I mean, I think one of the worst things I ever had, we, we went out to a rescue, there was a fawn in trouble, this is a baby deer. Uh, it was lying down, it had broken back legs, it was covered in maggots, I mean, there's no way this animal was going to live. And yet its mum was standing 10 feet away, and that, I'll tell you, that rips you apart because I know what I've got to do to this fawn hear my voice cracking a bit now. It can stay there. Mum can come and sniff it, see it, and know that it's no longer with her. So she gets a, a bit of you know, a time to say goodbye to it, if you like. Whether they feel this, I don't know, but I feel it's the right thing to do. So I had to put that fawn to sleep, and I sat and watched Mum come over to it, and I was in pieces. But you get equally, sometimes we had another deer which got stuck in a school playground. We had to sedate it because it had a big gash in it. So we did all the operation on site. We then released it about 500 yards away on a lovely bit of green. And I'm, when this deer just bounded off at speed, I'm just crying like a baby. I mean, the satisfaction and the feeling I get from being able to do that is absolutely huge. I can't describe it, it's so big. I mean, it, anything that could keep me doing what I do technology-wise, that would be absolutely fine, providing it didn't ruin the planet and didn't ruin anybody else, and I could keep on going. You know, if I had to have an extra bit bolted on, it would be nice if somebody could for once give me a brain, because I'm really lacking in that field. Um, that'd be great. No, I would keep going. You know, any technology I would take to allow me to do what I could do now and to keep going for as long as possible. If you've got the passion, then yeah, I'd go for 200 years. Give me 300 years. I just wonder what is going to be left of the planet in 300 years. I'd love now to sort of space hop and come back to this planet in 300 years' time, and I have no idea what we see. I'm terrified, but hopeful. Nature's brilliant. Nature can cope and always has with anything we've thrown at it. But it, over the last 100 or 200 years, we've thrown everything at it too fast. It will address the balance, it will sort it, but it takes time. It can't do it as quick as we can damage it. And that's what scares me now, that speed. I think mankind has become far too short-sighted. We've got to lose that. And hopefully this will be the beginning of realising what we could have if we just put our minds to it.